our next guest is going to talk to us about better Kenya <laughs> and Kenya Power. This is the chairman of Kenya Power Board, Joy Brenda Masinde. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. Welcome to the hot seat of the Situation Room. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. City, you know when I was speaking to Joy yesterday, and she was like, okay, so your name, your proper title. She was like, Eric, don't even worry yourself about calling me chair lady, chair woman, chair person. Just say chairman, okay? Mm. So chairman, karibu. <laughs> yes, scientists. People sorry. are already asking me on social media after you posted it. Hi, chairman. Sure, uh -huh. Eric. I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm a chairman. Mm. Oh, so, the, the woman part is uh, chairman. The, 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 the <laughs> woman part covers the man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. City, yes, please. please welcome the chairman to the Situation Room with the day's proverb. Mm. Our proverbs of the whole of this week come from the country of Benin. It's in West Africa. Mm -hmm. It's actually next to Togo, mm -hmm. whose capital Lome mm -hmm. is where Ecobank and its headquarters are in Skolst, right there. So they're neighbors. Mm. Okay, it's a very interesting uh, uh, country. Once upon a time, for those of you who love history, it was called Dahomey. Mm. Just like Burkina Faso was once upon a uh, time called Upper Volta, mm. mm -hmm. after the Volta River. Mm -hmm. But that's history. Currently, it is Benin mm. and the proverb. When night falls, grass turns to people. When night falls, grass turns to people. Yeah. You're that sounds like it could be true on Kenyan roads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it rains, <laughs> raindrops turn into vitses. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, traffic sprouts from nowhere. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> You're speaking to the, power, the chairman of Kenya Power. When darkness falls, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> grass turns to people. What's mm -hmm. your interpretation of this one? Yeah, because there's some characters who, unless there's the cover of darkness, they do not appear. I come from some parts in uh, this country where at night is where you hear a lot of activities of people uh, keeping Out feet. Outdoors. Outdoors. <laughs> 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 so there are some fellows who are nocturnal. Mm -hmm. Unless there is the cover of darkness, you do not see them or they do not appear. So that's what I was saying, even for Kenyan roads, when it rains... Raindrops turn into Interview little course. Daihatsu mirrors. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, you've been the chair of uh, Kenya Power for what now? About one, a year and a half? Yes, a year. About a year. Right. So, this is our second, this is my second year as chairman. You joined the institution that is has a monopoly on distribution of power across the country. That is correct. You joined an institution that's listed on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Yes. An institution that had previously had some run-ins between chair, uh, no, the board, the management. Mm. People joined the board. <laughs> People voluntarily left the board and said, he, hapa. Kimi umana. Siwe sani. Siwe sani. Siwe What's happening? What, what is it about that organization that was leading to all those issues? Okay, so... What did you find? First and foremost, one thing that I found is that Kenya Power is not really a monopoly. Let us say it's the majority player, but it's not really a monopoly okay. because 1996, we were a monopoly. Then they decided to unbundle. So they broke away all the various companies in the energy sector. Mm. So from Kenya Power, you birthed Kenjan, you birthed uh, Ketraco, you birthed GDC, you birthed all these other sector players that you have. And then on top of it, they gave us a re regulator. We have EPRA. And this then 2006. After, no, in 1996. 96. That's when the first, the first idea was off mm. came off here with Kenjan. Mm. So now, first forward, we've come into a place, EPRA actually, on a regular, every single month, is registering more and more people who want to get into distribution. So there are people who are doing large developments who want to distribute their own power. There are some sections of the country where this has started. So we are not quite an, a monopoly, mm -hmm. but we are still the major player in the power distribution business. Okay. Um, but what did I find? A bit of cacophonics, I must admit, because uh, what happened, there's a little bit of discord between um, the previous board and the management. There was plenty of drama. People had been sent home, but they were not really sacked. So there were people who were acting. So the guys were acting, wondering, will we ever be confirmed? The guys were at home, wondering, will we ever come back? And then in the process, there was a regime change. Regime change comes with 
change of, of um, no change. what can be changed. Mm. And that's how some of us found ourselves there because now out with the old, in with the new. And I think one of the, the things the board I was serving in was faced with mm -hmm. was we have a 10,000 strong workforce that was seriously demotivated. Mm -hmm. We had a management that um, was on tenterhooks was suspicious of everything mm. uh, that board was trying to do. Everything was deemed to be yet another trap, yet another. So it's been a year of building relationships, of building trust, of trying to just, you know, bring back a healthy equilibrium, trying to build morale. So it's been a year, basically, of plenty of relationship building. That's what I would I would say. But we are, we are at a much better place now. I what think. was it that was causing this rift between the board boards? and management and staff it's a little bit of everything i don't want to really cast aspersions because i was not there so mm. everything i'm saying is basically hearsay from what what are cooler discussions and uh, what you've heard and so i cannot be cross-examined on any of this mm. but from those who were there at the time it seemed like um there was a narrative that was driven that there was a lot of corruption and a lot of theft and so boards were coming in with this attitude of it's a new broom i'm going to sweep everything so everybody who mm. came was new broom trying to sweep everything mm. and so everything was cross uh, cross checked and rechecked and rechecked again there was the task force that also came in and also they were looking for this smoking gun and this the 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 you know the fingers in the cookie jar and so because of that sort of environment everybody now retreats into a defensive cocoon so you've got everybody trying to preserve themselves there's tales of war of people walking around with heavy kabutis in the boot and a million shillings and the number telling the wife this one here if I, you hear i'm arrested yeah. there's two million this is the number of the lawyer i'll tell you which police station i'm going so people were living a very kenya power was a crime scene at the time mm. so there was a lot of discord there was a bit of political interference as well because of course um the nature of our business is that government is the largest shareholder they have a say in who gets on the boards so there are times also when you're sent with instructions to go and try and do one two three things so like i said they cannot be cross-examined on the same mm. but when we were wondering how did you guys get here those were the tales of war that you were given you know what i find fascinating is you the role that Kenya power plays in this economy, if I say huge, I'm understating it. And the one thing this country doesn't lack is appropriate human resource. And yet, in the previous regime, we were entertained on a regular basis with the goings on at Kenya power. <laughs> and yet, the problems that one felt Kenya power was supposed to sort out and solve for the citizenry. Well, we kept being told they were being solved, but when you're told a problem has been solved and it's still there, then you wonder what it is that they're actually solving. Because mm. what you know as the problem is, persists. So you take the view that perhaps they have a different understanding of solving the problem. <laughs> but then here we are now, we are in the present. Mm. Yes. And uh, we are looking to the future. Mm -hmm. Now, the board that you chair, I'm sure, has wonderful plans for the even more wonderful people of Kenya. Mm. And uh, there are things that we should be cheering. Chief of which is the cost of power. Mm. And certain, we had the MD here, a very eloquent gentleman who explained to us at great length how it is that this thing works. Mm. And from our discussion, what came out was for over the years, what Kenya Power seems to have done is in the process of transmitting power, they choose the longest, most tortuous routes. <laughs> 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 oh yes, yes, yes. When MD starts talking about Langalani to Susuatu, yeah. yes, yes, so yeah. you get to a place where you're like, I'm still in Kenya. Yes, yeah, and you're listening. If you know the area, you can likely see. <laughs> and you're wondering, okay, these two places are next to each other. Why did you go here and then here and then go here and then come here? Why didn't you just go directly? <laughs> but there's a reason behind it. So tell us, what exactly have you planned for us so that we can be happy early? <laughs> 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 That's a compound question, but like I said earlier, there's been this unbundling. Mm -hmm. And so once upon a time, the decisions on where to go next, what to do next, where to invest next, were all vested in Kenya Power. 
that time it was Kenya Power and Lighting Company. So you could sit down in a boardroom and decide, you know what, the people of Western Kenya need more power, so we need more transmission lines, so we need more substations, and so we need this. And you could make the decision and avail the funds and go ahead and implement. Now there is a um, need for collaboration because I may have a, a demand for more customers who need power in a certain region. But if I have no transmission lines, I do not have the authority to go ahead and erect transmission lines. So it means I have to present the request and uh, ask my, uh, my contemporaries in Ketrako to kindly avail the funds to put a transmission line to a certain area. Mm -hmm. Now, Kenya Power is a commercial company, so we do raise revenue from our customers. Ketrako, on the other hand, is wholly government-owned. So unless Exchequer provides the funds to send that line to a certain area, you would find an order, a general agreement, and absolutely no action. So some of these things have made it stick in the mud. So plans, yes, we do have plans. We want to expand uh, the distribution network because that's within our power. We want to supply power to more people. But when the transmission has got constraints, there's nothing much you can do about it. You cannot really blame Ketrako because Ketrako, again, is waiting on Kenyans to pay taxes for uh, uh, Treasury to avail the funds. So it's a little bit convoluted at the, po at, at the, uh, at the moment. Actually, since, However, since we have to blame someone, surely, who, do you say, <laughs> who should we blame if not Ketrako? <laughs> No, it, let me tell you, it's, so it, it's the national treasury. Yes. It's a little bit of or everything. To parliament. Yes. Because if you tell Ketrako we need this done, and Ketrako tell you we don't have budget for that right now, we have to wait until we have to talk to the ministry. budget is availed. Our it means they have ministry, to talk to the ministry, ministry of energy. Exactly. Then the money is uh, ministry of energy talks Got. to ministry of uh, to the treasury. Treasury says okay, that is a priority. So, for example, the, that that long Suswa line, uh, the the. the yep. Yeah, the line that MD really Koro, likes to talk about. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. then Koru. And then, yes, There's a team one. asking, uh, how soon can this be done? And they go ahead and tell you, well, we need 24 months. Because they're working backwards. Two with, years. Yes. The process that they have to follow through to be able to to deliver it. Mm. And they're not being negligent. No, That's just not. their reality. But there's something else we're introduced here called load shedding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. If you don't change the transmission lines, you are losing power, which means you're losing money, Why which means you're being revenue? inefficient. That is true. Yes. It pains me. It yes. So, pains uh, me. so essentially, you have a zero-sum game here. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be supplying electricity, most of which you seem to be losing somewhere along the way. And this thing costs to produce. It so does. Surely, logic then should prevail that this is something that must be attended to as soon as is humanly possible. That is true. Yes. And in fact, a little bit of good news is that we recently got um, like a special per a window, a special permission mm. to actually construct part of that line using concrete poles. So rather than wait for the steel pylons that um, Ketrako need to use for high voltage wires, we're told, okay, fine, because this is urgent, uh, 24 months uh, cannot work. At least Kenya Power, you've got a little bit of budget because you guys are generating your own income, so it's just a matter of reallocating. Go ahead and build that line and use steel, uh, use concrete poles. And by the time Ketrako catch up with the bigger installation, this can be holding fort in the meantime. So mm. that is ongoing. So within maybe the next nine months, the load shedding towards uh, Western Kenya should be ended. But for us to even get that approval, I, I tell you, it was like pulling teeth. Because, again, we have this thing in Kenya where once something has, it's like this eternal fight between national government and county government. Once you've been told that this is your territory, we are very protective of our turf. Yep. And so even if I'm coming in to assist you, as long as it's a turf, like, no, it's like you want to show me up for is it, is it really protective or is it restrictive? I mean, w what are you protecting? It's, it's the same country. It's your turf. It's your territory. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. will peel all around it and you say this is mine mm. no one else can come here and th sometimes i feel that's that's what happens it's almost like if i tell you no can i do this for you then you see like i'm taking away something from you but i think when when push came to shove and the problems in western kenya became it's glaring and now load shedding became a reality we were told, okay, fine, this once please go ahead and just do your little steel concrete poles and We'll see what to do. But, but, mm. there is light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. 
because um, in, the, in the spirit of the government to try and have more uh, private sector uh, involvement in, in some of this business, Ketraco is getting involved with some um, private people mm. to construct transmission lines so that we can have a more robust network. So hopefully this will be a thing of the, of the past because the private people are coming with private money, which is more readily available than the treasury money. So hopefully Ketraco will be in a much stronger position within the next, that 24 months are telling us actually, we should see a lot more transmission going out. Because right now there are places that are completely off grid, yeah. that we still have to supply, yeah. that the rest of Kenyans have to cross subsidize because the other guys were running on pretty expensive thermal power. Does Ketraco have competition? Does Kenya Power have competition? Does Kenyan have competition? No. Okay, Kenjan has a lot of competition because all the power generators in the country are quote-unquote competing with Kenjan. They're not really. The thing is this, though, is that um, for many of them, they produce, you know, only so much power. Yeah. But Kenjan produces a whole lot more. It's a lot like Kenya Power. Kenjan is the dominant player, but there are very many more players who are coming in. And we need a lot more players to come in. Contrary to popular belief, IPPs are not the devil. Mm. They are necessary evil. They are not, not even evil. They are a necessary component to what we need. Because we, we do not have enough power in Kenya. Mm. I know people say, oh, there's all this sun, there's all this what. We actually don't have enough power in Kenya. Why? Okay. The power that we generate, we consume. We're Almost all of it. We're supposed to, aren't we? Yes. Yes. In an ideal situation, we should be able to generate enough to have what they call a spinning reserve of about 30%, so that you've got 30% excess of power than what you actually need. In Kenya, you make 20, 20 units, you consume 19.98 units. As in, we have got such little headroom. So whenever I hear that when there's a moratorium on IPPs and the whatnot, I'm like, you know what, with our growing needs, with our growing economy, with where we are headed, we need more power generators. Thing is, in the past we had a lot of bad deals. So guys are sort of, uh, they hear um, independent power purchasers and they're like, oh, those guys. But we've learned our lessons mm. and the law is a lot more stringent than it was 20 years ago. So Right now, if uh, an independent power purchaser is coming on board with Kenya Power, what the hoops that they have to jump through are a lot more determinate than what was there before. Because mm. what was there before was uh, a little bit of anarchy, let me see. It was whatever you negotiated is what you were given. Yeah. Right now, there's parameters. There are parameters on yes. we need to operate. Yes. Within those, the last, let's say, 10 years, where we mm -hmm. saw there was a government agenda to increase connectivity to the population, saying we have to get to 80%, even 100% mm. of Kenyans connected to the grid. Mm. Kenya Power then was tasked with all of that, or, of that work of mm -hmm. bringing in everybody on board. We remember the photos of the former president and the deputy walking into huts and saying, you are switching on power because mm -hmm. people are connected to power. Mm. How did that affect the books of Kenya Power? Wololo is where I would start. It, uh, it's they a were very low situation. <laughs> because what happened is we went from, um, I'm terrible with the numbers, but let me give you ballpark if what I remember is correct. We went from having something of about 3 million customers to 8 million customers within like six years. The, the growth was so exponential, which in itself seems like a good thing. Mm. But the, the, the thing is, um, now speaking as a business, if all I'm, I'm giving you is one bulb and one socket, it costs me more to get that power to you than I'm getting from your token. Because yep. some of those guys are not what we call lifeline. Mm. They spend less than 500 bob, 500 or less bob a month yep. on their power. Yep. What it costs me in terms of operations and maintenance to get the power to you is more than what I'm getting out. So yes, all these people are connected. Yes, Kenya are meta. We have angazad the sky, mm. but we were hemorrhaging funds it was costing you a lot more to maintain those yes. customers so the when you're doing that last mile connectivity the mm. government provides the funds mm. so getting the actual power to you is paid by the exchequer yeah. but once you get the power to you then now you become a customer yeah once you become a customer now it's me and you we have to have this conversation about please consume a little bit more power in some places the nature of the relationship with with the customers is such that it is so remote 
that even if there is um, illegal connections or things like that, the cost of me trying to find out where you actually are and trying to correct that is also prohibitive. Mm. And so you find that there was a lot more social satisfaction, but it hit the bottom line. Mm. So when that happens, you start looking for how can we make this a little, a little bit more efficient. Mm. And so you find um, now the accusation about cross-subsidization. There are guys who are not paying more so that others can have power. So our, our tariffs are banded. So you've got the lifeline guys. Mm. Then you've got the guys who are domestic one and you've got domestic two. So the guys who are on lifeline are consuming less than 30 units of power in a month. Mm. So those ones, their, their power definitely is cross-subsidized because what we charge them for power is less than what but you're looking at this person in terms of they just need to see what's going on in the evening and possibly charge their phone mm. and they don't have too much wahala after that but so, so before lifeline used to be up to 100 units so majority of kenyans were technically on on lifeline on lifeline mm. it wasn't good business because you've got all these people who are consuming. I mean, we had guys here in Nairobi with microwaves and uh, instant showers on Lifeline. Because 100 units and below, if you're a single person, you probably fall within that bracket. And so it wasn't good business. It was excellent politics. It was good socially. But for the business, it was bad. And so you find within the last six years, we've been unable to declare a dividend because we have been running on fumes, basically. Was this also the opportunity that was taken by some people, even within the organization, then to start having this monkey business? Because the whole conversation then comes with, all right, you've increased your transmission line. I mean, not, not your, your connection, your, your, line, your distribution network. Mm. Uh, you have transformers. You have meters. Some of these ones are substandard. So even after you've connected this one customer, it's costing you a lot to have these things running because of the substandard equipment, the cables that have been used, the transformers that have been used, the meters that have been used, even the sockets that have been supplied in some areas where they're supplying, all substandard. Was that a factor? It wasn't all substandard, but there, were, there well, were some discrepancies. Yes. There were some discrepancies. And that's part of what I have struggled with even as, as chairman, the procurement process, because as a um, state corporation, having majority government state makes us a state corporation that means we are subject to the public procurement process now what that does therefore is we have got people who have sat down and have studied the process to a t mm. they understand it left back and center mm. so when they come uh, you hear people talking about cartels so this is how it works so the three of us you know what we we all supply sockets yeah so we sit down and decide you know what um there's a tender coming up for sockets and this is how it's going to go down so you're gonna do this and you're gonna do this and i'm gonna do this and then when we go in you're gonna get this and then you'll subcontract me to do this and so, so when they come in they, they sort of crowded everybody else out mm. and they come in and they do this thing if what they're offering you is they'll meet your specs mm, but, but if what they're offering you ends up being a little bit uh, nonsense mm. because it's the same pool that you're swimming in the same contamination will be found in all mm. we've tried to make our, our tendering to have various lots so that if the eric batch seems to be not so good we mm. keep going with the with the city but so that we can see okay how do we mitigate this mm. but now that's where we end up with what we call tender wars yeah because now if eric gets it and uh, Joy is thinking, you know what, that's a load of nonsense. What do I do? I go to court. First thing I get is conservatory orders. Nothing proceeds with this tender until this matter is hard and determined. And our courts, unfortunately, have been giving them that. Mm. I have not understood that because I'm like, okay, when you give an injunction is because something is incompensable by damages. Mm. But if it's business, everything is compensable by damages. It's a game of, of money anyway. But the courts somehow think that that's the best way to go. So they grind everything to a halt. Once they grind everything to a halt, guess what happens? There's no supply. There's no procurement. Mm. Everything lapses. Now, in the world of procurement, if I went to a manufacturer and I got this price today, this thing is stuck in court in six months. When it's unlocked and told, okay, fine, proceed, go ahead. He goes back, the manufacturer, and the dude is like, you know what? At yeah, that time, the dollar was 130, now it's 140. Mm. That quotation does not work. What happens? Come back to me. I have to reopen the tendering process <laughs> and go back to square one. Right. So we go to a place where things like meters, for example, completely got finished. Mm. All of them, we everything we no had in the store, in store, our two-year supply was all exhausted because for two years we're locked up in court with that. Mm. So what happens now when you talk about standards? People start improvising. So we don't have meters. So what mm. do we do? 
So when Eric is sleeping, we come, we steal his meter, we go and install in some house in Mshago. <laughs> and like I had a case of, oh, my mom died, me I hadn't, hadn't gotten a meter, so I went to her house in Ushagu. I ignored that meter, and I came and I had an electrician installed for me because I needed power. Now, such things started happening. So before long, quality control sort of went out the window because now there was desperation. And because we were not even in a place to intervene, you sort of get to a place where you just sort of uh, let it rule and try and correct it as you go along. That's why you had the president saying, if you find guys who've done monkey business, try and regu regularize because there's a, a window of time there when... There could have been a reason, a good it was reason a jungle why they were doing there. that. Yeah, so... Some of the things, for example, with the transformers and stuff, there's a lot of stories about uh, faulty transformers, faulty transformers. But what we did find is that some of our contractors were involved in trying to assist customers to get, you know, better priced power, uh, for lack of a better word. Right. And so some of these things that mess up with the configurations cause the equipment to mal malfunction. Because before we even buy your, tr we take your transformer. We have a testing bench. Those things are tested thoroughly. Each, before each of them. Each unit. Each unit is tested before it's put up. Mm. So when it goes and it malfunctions, it's because for what it has been put up for, somebody has expanded, expanded its, scope. its scope. And so you find yourself in a situation where a malfunction becomes necessary. Because again, how does that equipment protect itself? If something goes beyond certain parameters, it trips, it goes off. So... It is what it is. Joy Brenda Masinde is the chairman of Kenya Power. She's here this morning as chair of the board to tell us what it will take to return and maintain Kenya Power to profitability and also to give us power without blackouts across the country, <laughs> everywhere. People yesterday were complaining there were about five hours without power in some parts of Nairobi. That was an act of God. Did you see that store? Okay. So how can we insulate <laughs> Kenya Power from acts of God? <laughs> Also, one of the questions that we're going to ask. My mother in law talked to didn't have power for like three days in yeah. Kimana. It had not rained. Don't blame God on this one. I know. Was it an elephant <laughs> that I was crossing from Amboseli? <laughs> I don't know. There are very many comments that are coming here and saying, all right, yeah, you're saying that uh, there, there's competition for Kenya Power, but it's not enough. Kenya Power needs to get proper competition to get some heat on its bottoms. What do you say? We have plenty of heat on our bottom. The people, one of the departments that I have got a high attrition rate and everybody who gets in tries to get out as soon as they've sat there is customer care. Because the guys who work in our call center take a lot of heat from Kenyans. Hey, Kenyans, you're not kind. Mm. So you find that um, we feel the public dissatisfaction. We get the public. In fact, there are places where I go, if I have a, a branded vehicle, I would rather drive myself rather than go in a branded vehicle just because of the level of dissatisfaction um, that our customers do have. Mm. Justifiably so. is is indefensible sometimes what we do. But we, as a board especially, we are determined to turn that around. So what will you do about that? How will you change customer satisfaction from unsatisfactory customers, unsatisfied customers to customers who can say yes, I, I see Kenya Power officials coming and in fact I buy them tea. Last year, we launched our strategic plan for 2023, 2028. And one of the things that we have done was we have a major emphasis shift from tech to customer centricity. Because we realized we, were a, we, are, a company, we are a company that is very rel reliant on engineering and engineers and all that stuff. And we are really busy with the wires and the transformers and things like that. We forgot the the aspect of our customers and so even our attitude the way we did our things was basically are the wires switched on are they mm. working mm. so the rest of it was basically we were winging it flying by the seat of our pants mm. so one of the things that um we have tried to do this year especially now in line with moving towards customer centricity you'll find a lot more engagement between kenya power and our customers which is what md was doing which is what i'm doing trying to talk more to our customers to sort of understand the sort of business that we are running and the things that we can do and what we cannot do. So, for example, if I meet someone and they're like, when are you reducing the cost of power? I'm like, well, not anytime soon, to be honest, because as it stands right now, the, the, the variables are not for going down. Mm -hmm. They are for either holding constant or maybe even going up. I'm talking about the forex, the, all these other things. So 
trying to be honest about some things, trying also to be mindful, like you said, every time somebody's power is out, I'm leaving money on the table and trying to get our, uh, our guys to also understand, you know what, when you tell people that I'll come after lunch, that money are you going to pay me? Mm. Please go and fix it now because as long as the power is off, the company is not making money, I don't have a salary to pay you. So that customer centricity is something that, it's a culture change thing. So it's going to take some time but we will get there eventually. I think um, even as, as this morning, I left the house and we had no power. And I decided I'm going to call into customer care. I'm not going to report on the app. Mm. And I was on hold for almost uh, 18 minutes before somebody finally came on the line. Mm -hmm. Right. And so now... What time was this? This was at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. You're on hold for 18 minutes. For 18 minutes. So okay. uh, somebody is picking up the call at about 4.40, and I think I said the calling at 4.20. Mm. And so she was very polite. She was like, oh, we did not know about this outage. We have clocked it, and we're going to get back to you. So when you do get to customer care, yeah. the service is satisfactory. But even getting through to customer care. Yeah. So I was thinking to myself, we have a customer chat and other things that we need to make come alive. It will take some time, but we will we will get there. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we have to admit also is that the the idea for a long time has been mutatu peleka wapi so mutadu, and I think we have realized our cheese is moving because to if, nadu. yeah, if you talk to yeah. the DG Epra, there are a lot more people who are affording to get off grid and are go and are doing so. Yep. So I would have to be incredibly stupid to think that, you know, to take my 9.4 million customers for granted. Because guess what? The customers who are walking away are the ones who can afford to pay me. So I'm being stuck with the, with the, with the customers who need the cross-subsidization. And the guys who help me to cross-subsidize are finding alternatives. So I have to up my game pretty quickly so that I retain my customers. Uh, mm. Kenya Power and reinventing this taking your client for granted thing. There was a, a, an organization once upon a time called Kenya Poster. Mm. <laughs> Kenya Post and Telecommunication, and telecommunication. Corporation. And your Kenya, who you mm. is. They offered telephone services, same attitude. You're given a bill and you're wondering whether you actually run a business for a calling business. Mm. Same attitude. Mm. And it persisted because we didn't have a choice, at least not much of a choice. Then handsets came. First, they came with these telephone boots, which you're supposed to walk around with and talk. Mm -hmm. Before we got to this, mm. that thing died. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. And I'm alive to that fact, by the way, that ours is, is a, a very fast evolving yes. field. The technology is getting better. It's getting yes. cheaper. People are able to get rid of you and get rid of you for good even, or even get rid of you for most parts. If they get a reliable alternative... They move. Mm. Oh, they will move. Oh. Like, like Anton Indegua, he says, he applied for power in April last year for a house not in Lodwa or in Lokichong or in Lorica, in Kahazukari. Paid 97,000 bob. To date, nobody has come even to tell him what's happening. He has no alternative. He's gone solar. You see? It's domestic. happening. That's what I'm saying. Somebody is moving our cheese. And if you've ever read that book, you realize that there's some of those mice that were like, no, it's coming back. It's coming back. Just wait. For me, I, I, I got into this as this is a business. We need to be putting money in the pocket of our shareholders. The company has become sustainable. And so stories like those break my heart because I'm thinking now that's somebody who we already stole from him. He's 97,000. And then now he's not a customer. So I'm, I'm not, it was 97,000 worth burning that relationship. And if we had been, if he had been my customer for the next, what, 30 years, how much more would I have made from him and have a, a mutually beneficial relationship? But we have, we made changes to the board last year mm. that also are going to help us in this, in this quest. Because um, one of the things that we realize is that the government owns 50.1 stake in Kenya Power, mm. but the members of the public, through public listing, own 49.9% of the stake. Mm. And they did not have any representation on the board in terms of getting a director on directly. Mm. And so... Not even one. Not even one. How did, how did that work out? So, so, so the, the first person who came with the smoking gun there of, uh, with, uh, with the... With the with the, the issue was when the World Bank was looking at the, saying your governance doesn't match up. And I'm like, no, our governance is, our governance is pretty good. Mm. They said, no, actually, if you look at your governance carefully, it doesn't. And so what we did, we had a, a special general meeting and the shareholders actually 
agreed with us that the minority shareholding should have a direct say in electing some of the directors uh, directly. And so that's what we did. The government being what it is, trying to move this process forward as a business, decided, you know what? Yeah. So they got off some of the directors and the shareholders elected four new directors. And so now we've got four directors from the general uh, public, the general shareholding, and then we've got the the five from government. So we are hoping that that also will help because now these are guys who are not there because of how are they assisted the government to come to power okay. as Amul is accused consumers of Consumers are not represented? No, consumers are not represented because if, you, if it's a listed company, you're looking to protect the shareholders' interests. Mm. Oh, the consumers, and, and these shareholders are shareholders of what yeah. exactly? The yeah. shareholders of the company in uh, making the business robust yeah. Not only get a return on investment, but they also generate value for customers. Yeah, man, my focus on the fifty-one percent which we own. You the fifty point one percent that one that you own. So should <laughs> government should bring in a member of the public. Yes, to represent yes. public interest. Yes. Well, you have the, the C, uh, you have the CS Treasury and the PS Energy, who are the ones Those looking ones out represent, for. Those yeah, yeah, yeah. But they represent government mm. instruct. And then you, you got, know what we're and talking then about. Got, she knows full well what we're talking about. Then you've about. got Akinajoy. Surely, I'm not representing you. Uh, even as we are feeling the pain, even me, I buy tokens and look at it. I'm you like, do represent. I am like, like yeah, you, you do. Say, the you do. person who's appointed as chair by the president represents you know, public interest. Yes. Because they're not With really us, we're necessarily a bit different. The president doesn't actually um, appoint the chair. Mm -hmm. the, you are elected oh, from you are elected peers. by the... But yes. then, so you, you are appointed by... I was nominated by the government. Right. And once we had our first board meeting, then my fellow directors elected me as chair. you as chair. Yes. Do you think there is sense to what City is saying? There is a some sense. A direct seat there that is representing public interest. There is some sense in terms of, um, how do I put it? In, this, in public, public spiritedness, yeah. but in terms of running a business, it's not very useful because the shareholders there are actually members of public okay. and they're members of the public with a stake. Yep. And that is why we felt it was important for them to come on because some of the things that uh, as government you might be harassed into doing, they have the, the, the strength to say, you know what, wait a minute, wait a minute. And in this one, actually, we are a bit outgunned because if you remove the CS and the PS, it's three versus four. So if they do want, they can pull a boardroom coup. Mm -hmm. But so far we've got a gentleman and a lady who are very, they're, they're really bringing value to the board, really opening up um, the space, expanding the conversation, bringing to the table things that might otherwise not have come to the table before. And I'm actually finding great value in having people who are representing the minority shareholding because they look at the numbers and tell, no, 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 mm. why are we doing this? This is not going, we are going to another year. Where, and that's why you're seeing we're we are getting to a place of more profitability because some of the things we were doing as, as let, just trying to get, just keep the power on, send the last mile, send the what. Some of them are like, you know what, let's look at that again. Unless the money comes in, you know, the service doesn't go out. You know, on this one, I'm a dog with a bone for a very simple reason. Mm. The role that the production of electricity plays in this country is huge, massive. There are groups, I don't know how many there are in this country, but we've come across some who represent consumer interests, meaning they're the people who've taken time to bother to understand how this industry actually works yes. and what happens. Mm. Someone may be a shareholder, but they may not have the knowledge that person has. This is a very specialized business. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, we have PSs and all these people who represent us. But these people do many other things as well. That is true. All so, of them are there by alternate, actually. They're yeah. not there in themselves. Yes, they will capacity. come and represent the government interest. Now, I know we're the sovereign, the government is ours, but that's not what I'm talking about. Mm. We have elected leaders who represent God, al God alone knows who or what. Elected. So now, when it comes to something this important, we thank God they're not there. But surely, when you have consumer interest, because these are people who ca you can see, they've taken time to bother to understand how these things work, and they push that envelope. People like these ought to be considered for the simple reason that they understand and they're not aligned either to the shareholders or the government. Mm -hmm. They're just consumers. They, they represent are, the cheese. Yes, that's just it. I know it's a bit far-fetched. I know it isn't the norm, but so was public participation. It is now the norm. So it is not spirit. I rest my case. Seller.
<laughs> ponder on these things. <laughs> no, it, it's also because when 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 you in the space that I am, I try to listen a lot to our customers. And at times even those who you say understand a lot, sometimes you listen to them and they're like, you know, they don't quite have the full gist. They understand what they need to understand for the space that they're in, but mm. it's a lot more complex than that. Once they get to the board, they'll have that's one. I mean, yes. b- before I joined on the before I joined the board, you for like example, us. I mean, I was the chief of Kenya uh, Bure Kabisa Awards you on, on you KUT. Like us. I was, <laughs> I was like, you know what? What nonsense is this? Until yeah. you go in and Switch they open all the, they open everything and you look at it and you're like, oh snap! Mm. And you realize, you know what? This this is a it's it's a, it's a big it's a big bite, mm. but it is surmountable. It is chewable. Baby steps we will get there. Baby okay. steps we will get there. So, for example, something like what you're talking about before we went on break, the perennial uh, blackouts. Blackout. That is one thing that um, even on my, even if you go on our WhatsApp wall, it's like no justification for this whatsoever. No justification for it whatsoever. But I realized by the way, blackouts are for different reasons. Unfortunately, in Kenya, there's one particular phenomenon, especially for guys who go for weeks without power. Vandalism is a big problem mm. because um, one of our directors comes from Lunyanza. I had a, a, a space that had not had power for three months. Now you're on the board, so you cough a little bit and a, a, transformer, a transformer comes from somewhere. Mm. And we fitted the transformer. It lasted all of 48 hours. Gosh, and then? It was completely vandalized. Back on the ground, all the oil has been siphoned. They've taken all the copper and they've left it there. Now, in such a situation, you know, the first thing is like, you know what? Transformers cost a pretty penny. Mm. There's, there's no transformer sitting around just waiting to be replaced because you vandalized yours. They cost them in the millions. Mm. So even if it's one of our directors, we have to tell him, you know what? Your guys are going to have to chill though because the other people who need transformers, we, you pulled rank to get this one. And we, got, we gave you a transformer. We gave you a transformer. We are not pulling rank to do nothing else. So those guys will be without power for another three months right. and they'll be like, oh, inefficient Kenya power. Yet... It's the vandals who make business almost impossible. So what is the strategy? Because if this is one big issue that's affecting your business, what do you, what do you want to do about it? Again, multi-sectoral. First thing first, I don't know why we export so much copper and we do not mine a single drop of copper in this country. Mm. Some things just have to be stopped because that's what generates the interest we, and, we and drives copper. the business. We do, we do. So kill the scrap business. It's, it's, for some items. It's like it's Something, that we, we export gold. I'm telling you. Mm. Like, I, I don't know if you saw the other day when there was an impoundment of, uh, it was a 40-foot container that was impounded full of uh, copper that was headed to the coast mm. to be exported. Yeah. The week before that, there are two containers that actually made it out. By the time we got the tip off, they were already loaded on the ship and those ones made it out. Um, I I've seen, I'm think you've seen our PS, Alex Washira, going on these sting operations and... In front, you have a legitimate scrap metal business, but in the next room at the back, you, you, you're, you're loaded power. full of aluminium and, and copper. Things that we don't mine and yet we export in tons. So there are some of those things where government has to help us and say, you know what, some of these things will no longer be exported. Even if you have tons of it, sell it within the country. We don't want to know where you'll take it because some of those things drive vandalism, mm. the, the demand for vandalism. Then another thing we also need to do is be public spirited as Kenyans. If you do notice, because usually they wreck the, the, the place and they'll, they'll you can't take it down in one go. They'll do things every single night. They'll be doing something small before the night they finally come to. I mean, if you see the young men who are pulling stunts, just, you know, blow the whistle on them. Kenyans have this thing of, oh, Kenya powers are thieves, so let, let them steal from them. Okay, and until it goes blackout, until you've got guys with diabetes medicine who don't have a fridge anymore, until you've got a mother whose entire stash of breast milk, which is ble- blood, sweat, and tears, going down the drain. That's when you know, but they, it has a real cost to people. So that's one of the things that I hope Kenyans will help us work. Madam Jack, can I ask? Yes, please. You mentioned something about the morale of the workers. Yes. What has been done how is that shaping up? Because mm. at the heart of it, the board can do all they like. If the workforce... But the 10,000 guys who are boots yeah, on the if, ground. Uh, that's it. You'll make your calls. Somebody mm. will tell you they're coming. Three days later, you may see one person. Mm. That sort of thing. So what's being done about that? Several things. First thing we did, like I said, last year was all about building relationships. So we found that we had plenty of workers who had been in the same job grade for over a decade. Mm. So we undertook a major 
realignment or finding out who needs to be where. And we did major stuff. So there are guys who are on contract for years. We gave them a more permanent contract. Mm. And so we did things that sort of gave people better job security. Some guys were in the wrong job groups. They were given two or three, um, they were given a, a grade or two uh, promotions. Their guys had been acting for quite a long time. We went ahead and confirmed them. We actually last year gave our, our employees a, a cost of living um, adjustment, adjustment in yeah. their salary to just sort of also tell them, you know what, we also recognize that we can't promote everybody, but everybody needs to feel some relief. Our management who are famous for knowing they are neither here nor there, most of the management now have got a substantive contract for a definite time. So they have the job security of knowing, okay, tomorrow we're not going to be at the back of a Subaru going to answer charges for we don't know what. Mm. There's that security of, okay, now I'm here, I'm working, I'm I have a contract, I have KPIs, I've got targets. And so the targets are going out. So, and this has translated actually into better bottom line because the guys who are no longer working, no longer being managed, now everybody is feeling that urgency of we need. There's a sense to, of ownership. There is. There's more yet to be done because mm. we still don't have enough people to be, to be honest, because we have a large workforce. Mm. The other thing we need to do is leverage on technology. That's something that we're working robustly again towards because our technology is, quite frankly, very, very good, mm. I must say. We've been on the cutting edge of technology for a long time, mm. but it's been evolving so fast, we need to play catch, up. catch up. So there's a lot more of our systems that can be automated, that should be automated, like you talked about the billing. Mm. Most of our, our customers are dissatisfied with the bills because they're not too sure that what they're being billed is the correct mm. thing. Now, using technology, having smart meters so that you can monitor your own consumption. You can even tell which socket is costing you the most. Is mm. it the water heater? Is it the cooker? Is it the... So you can monitor because this technology exists. Now, those are things that are capital intensive, but we have seen the partners who are able to help us get there. So soon you will be seeing the rollout of smart meters into domestic consumption. And that should help you to be sure that what you're being built, because most Kenyans mm. don't have a problem paying for nope. the electricity. Nope. As long as they're sure, they're paying, paying what they've for consumed. What exactly. So long as I'm not paying for my neighbor I'm in the factory next door. Exactly. Yes. yes. But the other thing Kenyans also need to do, mm. especially if you live in apartments and in flats, get an electrician to mm. make sure that you're only paying your bill. Because Kenyans, the, the places we've gone and guys are complaining of high bills, once you go and an electrician just like this, they realize, hey, Jirani had put in one wire <laughs> and his water heater is heating in your house. So please, if you're living especially in an apartment with multi, just get an electrician to also look your, your, your yeah. electrics over. Yeah. Just make sure by the way that the guy downstairs is yeah. not always boiling water in his kettle every two minutes because he knows Sorry, his wow. cooker socket is connected to you. to you because that has happened a lot as well. Madam Chairman, thank you very much for joining us. Asante for having me. Joy Brenda Masinde is the chairman of Kenya Power. Yes, chairman. Mm -hmm. And she insists. Thank you very much for joining us. Keep it here for more conversations. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day.